Okay, we have here a third order. Notice the notation here and pay careful attention to those details. This is an x cubed and this, these parentheses here indicate a third order derivative of y. And so I have a third order differential equation. It is linear. So we talked about that at the very, very beginning of the semester. But just to review that, thinking about what is applied to the dependent variable, only differentiation and multiplication by a function of the independent variable. So we have a third order linear differential equation. And we're given three initial conditions here, all given at x equals 1. And what we're given here uh, are three functions. And this is actually a problem from your textbook, so we're going to just do it as an example of what the textbook, some of the textbook homework is asking you to do. And in the textbook, they tell you that you have here three linearly independent solutions to the differential equation. So you could be asked to verify that they are solutions. We know how to do that. We did that at the very beginning of the semester. Take the appropriate derivatives and plug those in. You could verify that these are all solutions. We've recently talked about how to determine linear independence of these three functions. The textbook tells you that they are linearly independent, so you don't have to verify that. If you did need to verify that, you could either use the definition of linear independence or you could use the Ronskian to do that. Notice that your derivatives of this third one here are going to be uh, a little bit more complicated than the derivatives of these first two functions just because of needing to use product rule. But you could use the Ronskian. You'd be looking for uh, finding that that Ronskian is not the zero function uh, on, on the interval where our functions are defined. Notice our functions here are going to be defined only for x greater than zero because of this ln of x here. So uh, we're given this differential equation, initial conditions, and three linearly independent solutions. And what the textbook asks you to do is find the particular solution that satisfies the initial condition. So let's go ahead and do that. So in order to do that, first of all, remember that for a third order differential equation, I need three linearly independent solutions to build this solution space. So the linear combination of all three of these linearly independent solutions, all linear combinations of these generates the general solution for this third order homogeneous differential equation. So my general solution is going to be y equals c1 times one of these. It doesn't really matter what order you have them in here, but c1 times one of these plus c2 times the second one plus c3 times the third one. So that gives us our general solution or all solutions to this differential equation. And then if I want to find the particular solution satisfying these initial conditions, I'm going to be plugging these values in for x, I'm going to be putting my values for y, and solving the system that I'm going to get when I, when I do that. So I need to find a couple of derivatives, a first and second derivative here, so that I can plug those in. Um, so do that in a different color here. So y prime c1 plus, I should have maybe just put minus, minus 2 times c2, x to the negative 3. And then here I'll need product rule here. I'm going to use parentheses, uh, negative 2, x to the negative 3 times ln of x. And then for this next term here, I'll have x to the negative 2 and then times the derivative of ln of x, which is 1 over x. So the x to the negative 2 times 1 over x, I can just rewrite as x to the negative 3, just to make things a little simpler there. And then I'm going to need another derivative because I have an initial condition also given at, uh, for y double prime here. So my c1 will drop out, and here we'll get um, 6 c2 x to the negative 4. And then here I'm going to need to use product rule, and then I'll have another term here. So I'll get 6, x to the negative 4, ln of x. And then again, like I did last time where I simplified kind of as I went, for this next term in product rule, I'll have negative 2, x to the negative 3, times the derivative of ln of x. So that'll be times of 1 over x. So my x to the negative 3 times 1 over x will be x to the negative 4. So minus 2, x to the negative 4. And then when I take the derivative of this term, 
I'll get another x to the negative 4 term, so at some point maybe I want to simplify those. So minus 3x to the negative 4. All right, so there are my appropriate derivatives, and now I just want to plug in my initial conditions. These are given at x equals 1, so we'll be putting in x equals 1, and then the output values for the function and its derivatives are going to be given by the output values for these initial conditions. I'll end up with a system of equations that you'll need to solve. Sometimes the systems are easy and you can solve them in your head. Sometimes they're more complicated and so you can use technology to help you solve that system. But let's go ahead and write down that system. All right, so when I put in x equals 1 and y equals 1 for this first equation, I will have 1 equals c1. And then when I put in 1 for x to the negative 2, I'll also get 1, so plus c2. And then for this last part here, natural log of 1 is 0. So this whole last term will end up going away when I put in x equals 1 on that one. And then for y prime, I'm going to use this second initial condition. So we'll have 5 equals c1. And then I'll have minus 2c2. And then here in this next part, remember that I'm putting in x equals 1. And natural log of 1 is 0. So this part will go away. And so this part here will be 1, so plus c3. And then I'll put in negative 11 for this last one here. And so I'll get uh, 6 c2. Uh, when I put in x equals 1, again, the natural log of 1 is 0, so that part will go away. Here I'll have a minus 2 and a minus 3, so a minus 5 times c3. All right, and so you can either use technology to help you solve this system, or this one's not very hard to solve by hand. Uh, I might choose to just write everything in terms of C2. Notice that I've got a C2 in all three equations. If I write these first two equations in terms of C2 and substitute into the second equation, it's pretty easy to solve by hand. I'm going to go ahead and do that. Uh, so this first one, I get um, C2 equals 1 minus C1. Uh, actually, I want to put that in terms of C1. So C1 equals 1 minus C2. I want to write everything in terms of C2. And I'm going to substitute into this second equation, so I'm going to leave that alone. And then I'm going to write this third equation uh, in terms of C2. So I'll move the terms around so that I can uh, write C3 equals in terms of C2. Uh, so let's see, I think I will add the 5c3 to, to both sides and add 11 to both sides, so I have positive coefficients everywhere, and then divide through by 5. So I will get 6 fifths c2 plus 11 fifths. All right, and then I'll substitute those both into the second equation, and then we'll be able to solve for c2. Once we do that, we can write our general solution. Uh, so I'll have 5 equals, in place of c1, I'll have 1 minus c2, minus 2 times c2, that's there, and then plus c3, and so in place of c3, I'll put this. Uh, okay, so then we'll go ahead and simplify that when I combine my like terms and move my constant terms to the other side of the equation. Uh, we'll just go down here and finish this. Uh, so when I move my constant terms to the other side of the equation, I'm going to subtract 1 from both sides and subtract 11 fifths from both sides. So I'll be subtracting 16 fifths from both sides. Uh, so 25 fifths minus 16 fifths, so 9 fifths equals, and then I'm going to combine these terms. So this is minus 5 fifths plus 6 fifths, so that's 1 fifth and then minus 10 fifths, so negative 9 fifths, C2. And so we multiply by negative 9 fifths, and we'll get negative 1 equals C2. And now that we've got that one, we can easily find our C1 and C3. My marker's kind of dull, so I'll go ahead and go up here and use a different color here. So when I put in C2 as negative 1, I'll get C1 as 1 minus negative 1, or uh, 2. And then when I put in my negative 1 for C2 here, I'll get C3 is negative 6 fifths plus 5 fifths. So C3 will be 1. All right, so once I've got all my C values, what we were really after here was finding the particular solution to the differential equation that satisfies our initial conditions. So that's what we were really asked to do, and we're ready to go ahead and write that down. 
So we're just putting these values in for our C1, C2, C3, and what I've written here for the general solution. So 2x uh, plus 1 times x to the negative 2, so just x to the negative 2, and then plus 1 times x to the negative 2 ln of x. All right, so that's our particular solution satisfying those initial conditions. All right, so then the next thing that we will be talking about really in the rest of the chapter is kind of the idea of, okay, so how do you come up with these three linearly independent solutions to start with? So depending on the differential equation, sometimes that's easy, sometimes that's hard, but that's what we're going to be starting on in the next section.